Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first game school video. I am honored to be invited to host the first video. My name is Disdain. A lot of the people, you know, online know me because I am an avid content creator. I'm a hip hop artist, a producer. I also own a few businesses, and for 20 years, I was a game developer and system architect. And I've been invited to do this because I have both a technical background and an avid love for this game, Stormworks Build and Rescue. Today I am going to be showing you guys how to build an advanced nuclear reactor. This nuclear reactor is used to power my own personal ship in Stormworks, and I will be doing a review on that ship in a future video. But for today, I'm just going to show you the tips and the tricks and the secrets to my mega nuclear reactor here. And honestly, it is not hard to get one of these to work. And it is an amazing source of power. You can really build some amazing craft with this new nuclear system that they released not too long ago. So here it is, our nuclear reactor. And this is probably the most advanced nuclear reactor I've built. This nuclear reactor has eight batteries, six generators, two gearboxes, 20 steam turbines, one boiler, one condenser, two tanks, and the nuclear core itself. Now, all of this is automated through my Nuke microcontroller, and that will be released today on the Steam Workshop. This microcontroller, as you can see here, manages the entire nuclear system, and it's even configurable and adjustable, and it has lots of little cool features built into the Nuke controller system. And our nuclear reactor is not a big reactor core here. Like, a lot of people think that you have to have a lot of fuel rods to create a good enough reaction to, to generate a lot of power. But you can see here we have six. And we're using the good old six-pack method here with two control rods, a six-pack of uh, fuel rods there, and they're dynamically loaded on the start of this thing. So let's take a look at this thing actually running, and I'll go through each and every part with you and why I put these parts into place and the importance of the parts. So obviously the first thing you need is batteries because you need a place to store the power you're going to generate and the way that I like to use the nuclear reactor is generally I use the nuclear reactor to turn steam turbines then to generate electricity and I use electrical motors to power things so let's uh, spawn this sucker we are gonna spawn it in and there it is there is our entire nuclear reactor look how big it is and how beautiful it is it's got Gorgeous look to it. I even took the time to paint all the little pieces for you to make it look all pretty. And here we are. So this is our uh, little control panel here. And we got to throw on the main breaker. And then we push one button. And that is literally it, people. This is a one-button push nuclear reactor. Auto-balancing, self-maintaining. Uh, self we just push this. That little light means it's loading the rods. And you can see the rods loading in here. Getting right, and there's some connectors in there that'll snap them into place when they actually get close. Boom! They're snapped into place. Now we're green and red. The nuclear core you'll see here will start be building temperature. And once that builds up with temperature, then it'll start transferring that temperature over to the boiler. So let's explain how a nuclear system works in general. So inside of this box here, or the core, we have fuel rods, and when those fuel rods are close to one another inside of these fuel rod housings, they essentially will start heating up. We fill this entire chamber here with water, and that reaction heats up the water. Now, in order to prevent it from overheating, we have these things called control rods, and the control rods are inserted at a certain level to allow them to uh, interrupt the reaction between the main fuel rods and to help us balance it from preventing a runaway nuclear system. So it's very, very simple, right? Doesn't sound hard. You don't have to know any of that. Honestly, you download our little controller nuke here, you plug the stuff in, you build it right, and it'll just work. It just It's like magic. It's like Harry Potter did it. So outside of the uh, core, there are several components here that make the nuclear reaction work. And the first thing is the boiler. So from the core, when we heat up the water, the water is going to be traveling through these pumps into this pipe and into this boiler. This boiler will get heated up with the water that's being warmed from the nuclear reaction, and that will be turned into steam and pressure. 
the steam and pressure will exit this come down this pipe head over here and get injected into the first steam turbine right here now the way that we are doing this system it looks like we got a ton of pumps up here we do um, what I've found is the steam turbines are the most effective when the injection of the steam is forced into them and so you'll see here between every steam turbine we actually have a double pump system so these steam turbines are double pump, two large pump steam turbine, 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 so on and so forth, all the way through all 20. The way that our steam turbines are set up is we're setting up in a U. So it starts down at that end, the steam will go all the way through these turbines first and wrap back around here and go all the way down that channel of turbines over there. You can see all of our power is connected, both on the right and the left side of every turbine, and then it is all funneled down into these two gearboxes, which there's actually four gearboxes here. And this is really a, uh, a me stepping up at a uh, three to one ratio. And let's actually, you know, uh, look at that a little bit later. But there's a three to one ratio in these gearboxes. And uh, on both of them, and so they're getting stepped up twice at three to one, and then turning these six generators. Those six generators are hooked to the batteries, and that is what is producing our power. So let's talk about some of the more complicated details of this. The first thing I suggest is you hook up all the power output, and you double pump every steam turbine with a large pump. It seems like it's going to take a lot of electricity, but it honestly takes a lot less than you would think, and it creates it generates far more by doing the double pumping. So after the steam leaves the entire system, it ends up down here into a condenser. And the condensers can be a little bit tricky to work with in the nuclear system. Now, when you look at the devs' samples of how to build a nuclear reactor, you'll notice they have a lot more radiators to cool the condenser uh, than I do. I have one electric radiator, and you can see it is not getting very hot everything is staying cool and the fluid is moving through it consistently so how do I make this system work at a much smaller basis than the devs originally made it work I'm using a trick of vacuum pressure that the game has by having an empty tank on the bottom a full tank on the top and then feeding one to the other using a pump when necessary so you'll see this fluid pump, when water pull, is pulled back out of the condenser and into the empty tank, it's getting drawn out under vacuum pressure through this pump back to the full tank. That full tank in turn is then being fed over into the boiler, and that way the boiler never actually runs out of water. This system prevents all the water from turning into steam in the system and the boiler running out of water. If you were to just use one tank, you end up trying to put a pump in front, a pump in back, and then control when to redump the water into the boiler. It becomes a much more complicated system. If you write it this, if you uh, architect it this way, it'll be much easier to manage and much much less moving parts and stuff for you to hook up. Essentially, having you know an empty tank, a full tank, and a pump between the two, uh, then having the condenser hooked uh, hooked into the empty one and the boiler hooked into the full one. This is the best way to do this system, absolutely. So you'll see here the nuclear core is still running. Everything is going fine. Let's look at where we're at. We're at generating 530, 40, whatever this is. This is per generator, and you can actually see that if we go look at our generators here. If you go look at our generators here, you'll see the output of each generator is actually putting out a tremendous amount of power. And you'll see our RPS on each generator is around 22. This is because of our gearbox combination. We have the power coming out here at about 2.48 RPS from the turbine. But when it comes into the first gearbox for 3 to 1, it ends up at 7.4. And then when it goes to the second gearbox at 3 to 1, it ends up at 22. And you'll see that is what is causing this huge output uh, that we're getting. If we didn't have these gearboxes here, and you really need two sets of them with 20, you need really a set of gearboxes per 10 turbines, or else you'll start see uh, you'll, you'll you'll lose more power than you'll actually you know be making. But when you set it up this way, uh, 10 turbines, two gearboxes, three to one ratio, 
you end up getting 22 RPS at the generator. And in this case, you can see we're almost pushing 600 watts out of each generator. With six of those, that is a whopping 3,600 people. 3,600 watts. And that's enough to push my boat at 21 knots without losing a drop of power. So, you know, and that's a big boat. I mean, I'm not saying it's huge, but it is a good sized boat. It, is, it definitely has some weight. It's an all-in-one boat for me. It is both a tanker, a freight carrier, my helicopter landing, and my submarine port all built into one that we're running right here. This reactor is not that complicated, but the tricks in it are very specific. When you build your nuclear reactor, like I said, you really need to pay attention to the gearing in the generators. You need to pay attention to making sure you're injecting your steam into the turbines. And you need to be sure that you are building some kind of thing that is going to handle the condenser properly. And my favorite way of doing this is, you know, empty tank, full tank, full tank connected to boiler, empty tank connected to condenser, and then a pump in between the two. And you can see it working right here. It's just moving that little bit of water that the condenser is putting out back into this full tank, which is then being moved over here into the, uh, into the boiler. Now this system runs, runs, runs really consistently. You'll see here we're at 150 on the core temp, 103 on the boiler temp. We're putting out a huge amount of power and uh, we are have very little boiler pressure. You don't need a lot of pressure to put out a lot of power. I was very confused when I first started this system. I thought that the pressure is what drove the power and it is not what drives the power. Uh, really the volume of steam you can produce and the speed in which you can inject it into the turbine is going to be the thing that defines how much power you get out of the nuclear system and so the things you must absolutely have is uh, a consistent way to maintain your steam and when I was talking about the condenser that's where that comes into play if you don't have this condenser set up right what ends up happening is this boiler will run out of fluid It'll actually run out of water and it will be unable to draw the water back in from these tanks properly. I've tried several setups, like I said, to get this to work. And while the devs, you know, chained together a bunch of cooling items to make it work, I simply made uh, improvements to the way that the water handling is done. And I'm utilizing a trick of vacuum pressure in Stormworks here uh, from a full tank to an empty tank and that is what is allowing the fluid to be maintained in here in the steam boiler and you'll see right now our fluid is at 98 and dropping and you'll see what happens when this thing actually hits zero if it does hit zero so what's important to note here is our microcontroller that we wrote actually does balance out this system around two points of pressure and it tries to maintain that pressure just around two uh, at the most but you'll actually see it go up and down a little bit. Now you see our fluid is dropping. It's down to 18 now. Our temperature is 102 in the boiler and our steam is up to 66. But you'll see here that the fluid, once it gets down lower, it's going to actually start drawing in the fluid from the full tank on the bottom and we will get to see the vacuum system actually putting water back into here. So if you want to know what turns the turbine, it is the steam number. It is not the pressure. The pressure that you create inside of the system uh, does not necessarily equate to power. What equates to power is the steam number. And the steam number is actually the one you can't get from a data point perspective off of the boiler. Okay, it has finally run out of fluid and you can see here the actual cooling system in action now the vacuum system this is what is happening it is taking the water that is being collected from the steam reaction in the condenser here and you can see the fluid there at 15 right now that fluid is being drawn into this empty tank at the top then a pump is pumping that a force pumping that into the full tank below it and that is being drawn by vacuum into the boiler and you can see our fluid there going up and going down but essentially the fluid is maintaining a level uh, that's optimum for steam production 
So it's trying to keep just enough fluid inside the boiler to keep the steam as high as possible. And really, uh, this is the best way I have found to balance out the system. So just to wrap this up, condenser, no pump to empty tank, empty tank with a pump to the full tank, and the full tank hooked with no pump to the boiler. All right, so that is the way that the system should be set up. And now you can see it's just on a beautiful uh, uh, cyclical system of producing the steam, running it through the turbines, turning it back into water, pumping it back into the boiler, and redoing the whole process all over again. And as long as we can keep this balanced, we have an infinite source of power, and this is, generates quite a bit of power. Right now we're doing 551 per generator, you know, times six generators. That's right, six generators. A huge output of power. Enough to push a rather large ship at 20 or 25 knots without drawing a lick of energy from the system. So that's it, everybody. That is my advanced nuclear reactor that is powering my ship. And uh, thank you for tuning in to this first Game School video. I was so happy to be invited to host this first one to show you my advanced nuclear reactor. You will be able to get the parts for this, the entire reactor itself, and the microcontroller on the Steam Workshop. Very shortly, I'll have it up there. Just look up Nuke and UK. Be sure to subscribe to the, uh, to the Game School channel. These guys are great. They're going to really try to push out some very technical builds. And they're going to be covering a lot of other sandbox games too. They're going to be inviting a lot of other content contributors. Not just myself. We've got a lot of people lined up here at, at Game School. So yeah, keep yeah, watching. Yeah. Subscribe. Hit the like button. Love y'all. Peace. Yeah. Business. I've been doing this so rough.